Yes, I will give a talk about uh, my recent paper on a Cantor Bernstein type theorem for spanning trees in infinite graphs. Um, so, this is about uh, joint work with uh, Josh Erdi, Attila Yo, Paul Knappe, and Max Spitz, um, all from the University of Hamburg. Well, no, Josh Erdi is now in, at the uni Technical University of Graz. Okay. Um, First, maybe you remember from your first year of undergrad the theorem of Cantor and Bernstein, um, which says uh, that whenever we have two sets A and B, and we have an injective function from A to B and an injective function from B to A, uh, then we already have a bijection between A and B. And this is the type of theorem uh, that I want to talk about today. So if we have uh, the uh, one object in the one direction and the other object in the other direction, then we also have a, an object in both directions. And today I want to talk uh, about spanning trees in infinite graphs. Namely, if we have a packing of spanning trees in an infinite graph of uh, lambda many things for some cardinal lambda, and the covering of lambda many spanning trees uh, in that infinite graph, then we can also decompose the uh, edge set of the graph into lambda many spanning trees. So let me uh, make this a bit more precise with some definitions. So today G will always be an uh, uh, infinite multigraph. Uh, without uh, loops. So we allow parallel edges, but uh, we don't allow loops. Uh, and lambda will always be a cardinal, sometimes finite, sometimes infinite. And uh, uh, lambda packing is a family uh, of uh, lambda many trees of uh, lambda many and in this case edge disjoint spanning trees of G and a lambda covering is again a family of uh, lambda many spanning trees of G uh, such that uh, the edge set of G is covered by the edge set of all the trees. And uh, lambda decomposition is a family um, uh, of lambda many edge disjoint spanning trees. Um, such that uh, the edge set of the graph is actually the disjoint union of the edge sets of the spanning trees. So really, uh, the edge sets of the spanning trees give a decomposition of the edge set of the graph. Okay, and our theorem then just says um, G admits uh, lambda uh, decomposition if and only if G admits uh, lambda packing 
and uh, lambda covering. Uh, in this talk, I will do, prove this theorem only for infinite lambda. Um, the proof for finite lambda is quite different and uh, forced us to uh, consider a more general theorem that we proved about infinite matroids. Um, but I don't want to go into that. Maybe if I have time at the end, I will uh, state that theorem, but will not provide a proof. While for this theorem, I intend to uh, give you the proof. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Uh, the graph is infinite, yes. Uh, yes, um, maybe, uh, yes, you, you, you immediately saw it. Of course, for a finite graph, this is a very trivial statement because uh, uh, decomposition in, uh, so a, a covering of k many spanning trees, uh, if we have that, then, well, uh, we know exactly how many edges we have. And uh, every... Uh, Packing of spanning trees will necessarily use all of these edges because it's just um, n minus 1 times k for uh, n being the number of vertices. Okay, in infinite graphs, this is uh, no longer trivial. And um, while uh, we have proved that, we also found uh, some. Other nice and uh, easy proofs for some uh, uh, no already known theorems which characterize the existence of a lambda packing, um, a theorem which is due to La Violette, and a theorem characterizing the existence of a lambda covering, which is due to Erdős and Heinal. Um, and uh, we use these theorems. But we have much simpler proofs than the original ones, uh, which we found, so I will also present these proofs. So let me start with the theorem of La Violette from 2005. Uh, was it 2005? It was 2005. Um, if lambda is infinite, then uh, G admits uh, lambda packing if and only if uh, G has edge connectivity at least lambda. Uh, originally, La Violette proved a more general theorem, which had, had this as a corollary. But uh, in his proof, um, he could, for uncountable uh, uh, lambda, only make it work using the generalized continuum hypothesis. But uh, a bit later, Lajos Sukup um, could use uh, the technique of elementary submodels to remove this con uh, restriction to the more general theorem and show that it also holds just in normal uh, ZFC set theory. Um, but uh, now we have a really nice uh, little proof of this theorem um, just using uh, a transfinite uh, recursive construction. And uh, yes, of course, uh, I don't expect every of uh, every one of you to know what these transfinite recursions look like. So that's why I thought I give you a quick primer on ordinal numbers.
Okay, um, so I think you may all remember what a well order is. Let me remind you anyway. Uh, well order, so it consists of some set X and the uh, uh, relation on X, uh, namely an order relation, is a totally ordered set. such that every non-empty subset of X contains the least element. Um, equivalently, it's a totally ordered set in which we don't have an infinite decreasing sequence, infinite strictly decreasing sequence. And uh, this gives us a roundabout definition about ordinals. Um, the equivalence classes um, of well orders with respect to um, order isomorphisms um, are called ordinals. So technically set theorists uh, wouldn't define ordinals like this because these equivalent classes are no longer sets, but proper classes. But for the scope of this talk, uh, we don't really care. Um, OK, so, so what does that mean? Well, every, of, every one of you probably learned that uh, the natural numbers are well ordered. So every subset of the natural numbers has a least element. Um, and of course, just uh, any finite order uh, any finite total order is uh, also well ordering. So we can imagine here having 0, 1, 2, and so on. And so this is the set of natural numbers, um, which in the ordinal context we often denote by omega. OK, so um, that's. Um, we can continue. This may not be the only uh, well order. For example, if we just put another element on top of all of these natural numbers, then we still have a well order. And let's call this element itself maybe omega. And let's put another one there, which we call omega plus one, and another one, omega plus two. So um, all of these uh, will again be well order. So basically, we count up to infinity, and then we just continue counting. And uh, we can do that until we basically reached omega plus omega. So count it in trinity twice. And uh, then we may as well put another thing on top of there, and so on. So all of these things are well orders and ordinals. Um, and we can. Uh, also uh, have, so uh, a nice theorem about ordinals is that whenever we have two well orders, we can um, find an initial segment of one of them such that uh, the first one, so the other one will be actually uh, isomorphic to this initial segment in precise, uh, precisely. So, uh, Every ordinal is isomorphic to an in initial segment of uh, some other or some uh, larger ordinal. So, uh, so for two ordinals, one will be an initial segment of the other. And this defines us an ordering on the uh, ordinals, which will, in fact, be a well order itself. This time, a well order of a proper class, but uh, never mind that. Um, and we distinguish ordinals into two types. Mainly, we have 
uh, uh, we have a type uh, like like this. So if we just uh, look at this, this is what we would call a successor ordinal because it's uh, it is the su successor of a, a strictly smaller ordinal. Uh, so it is there's a smaller ordinal which is the maximal thing uh, smaller than itself. So um, it will be the successor. And the ordinals which are not successors, um, for example, um, the set here, omega plus omega, which I indicated before, will be a limit ordinal. So an ordinal which has no maximal thing which is uh, smaller than it according to this order. Okay, why are these ordinals useful? Well, they allow us to do things like induction and recursion um, for longer than uh, the usual induction or recursion on the natural numbers, namely transfinitely. So we have uh, the principle of transfinite induction. So let's say we have uh, a property P uh, of ordinals then um, we have an induction start um, if uh, P0, zero, so 0 is usually what we just call the smallest ordinal is true and uh, the successor step um, which says if um, P alpha is uh, true then so P alpha is true implies that the successor of alpha, p alpha plus 1, is true. And we have the limit step. So whenever um, p uh, beta is uh, true for all beta less than alpha and alpha in this case is a limit then um, p alpha is true so if all these uh, three things hold then p uh, alpha is true for all ordinals So just like the usual induction principle, just that we can carry on longer. And similarly, we have transfinite recursion. So, uh, Again, now we want to define something recursively, so we start by defining some set x0 um, second uh, uh, we define some set x alpha plus 1 uh, on basis of x alpha And third, we define uh, x uh, alpha for alpha limits um, uh, uh, on basis of all uh, x beta for beta less than alpha. And then uh, this 
this process uniquely defines some x alpha for all ordinals. So just the usual things. And this is all that you need to know about ordinals today. Any questions so far? Good. Then I will already move on to start proving this theorem from La Violette. So one direction is easy. Which one? Um, <laughs> the, forward, uh, the forward is trivial. Yes, so of course, if we have a packing, um, then between any two vertices, we find a path in each of the spanning trees. So we have edge connectivity, uh, at least lambda. Uh, yes, so there are different versions of Menger's theorem, um, even much stronger versions hold, but uh, the weak version that, uh, that we have it for uh, just, so for just the cardinality version, so the, um, if we cannot separate by deleting lambda many vertices, then we have lambda many parts. This is actually very easy to prove. Okay, um, so uh, the other direction, um, and for the other direction, uh, we assume the large edge collectivity and build a lambda packing with a transfinite recursion. Um, okay. Okay, uh, actually, um, what we will build are not spanning trees, but just edge disjoint spanning subgraphs. So we don't care for this step that we are building trees, because uh, an edge disjoint spanning subgraph, we can just throw away a couple of edges uh, to be, become a tree. And if we have edge disjoint spanning, spanning subgraphs, we of course have edge disjoint spanning trees. Okay. Um, so the plan is we will build for all alpha. Uh, uh, OK, let, let me maybe first say that uh, let's first start by picking an enumeration of the vertices. Um, so let's say we have kappa many vertices for some cardinal kappa, and we fix an enumeration. Then our plan is um, to, for all alpha less than kappa, uh, we find a family Ti alpha, alpha uh, less than lambda of edge disjoint subgraph. Um, such that, so all uh, on a vertex set uh, V alpha, so we choose some common vertex set for all of these in, in each step. And we make sure that um, all um, that we, from the enumeration that we fixed, will contain uh, an initial segment. So the first alpha many vertices of enumeration should always be at least in there. Maybe we have more in there, but we want to have at least all of them in there. Um, why is this the plan? Because then we can take as uh, Ti the union of all the 
t is alpha for alpha uh, less than kappa. And uh, these will then really be edge disjoint spelling subgraphs. Um, I, uh, yeah, uh, I will ensure that we are connected. In um, and then the union will also be connected. Yeah, I missed that. Um, uh, okay, each piece, so yes, each piece uh, we will ensure that it's connected. So um, let's assume the union is, so let's take two vertices out of the union. Um, well, both of them will already so, uh, appear in my enumeration. So there will be one which is larger, so uh, V beta, let's say, and then uh, uh, then already in step uh, beta, we will uh, already be there. We are connected there, so contain a path there. Um, I haven't defined it yet. Uh, I, uh, I will, I just will guarantee that it contains at least these. And in step alpha, it will be the same for all of uh, this family of trees. This is a J, yes. And this is also a J. <laughs> okay. Any questions about the strategy while I'm wiping the board? Um, well, yes, so if we would define Ti kappa, it would be uh, defined precisely as this union. So um, I could call this Ti kappa. But since in the statement of the theorem, oh, I, I haven't called it anything in the statement, so yeah, I can't call it Ti kappa, it would be, would be the same. Okay. So I do a transfinite recursion. I start with defining V0 as the empty set. I define Ti0 as the empty tree for all I. OK, so in the successor step, what do I do? If the alpha already is in the alpha, uh, then I do nothing. Well, so I probably should say then v alpha plus one will just be v alpha, and ti alpha plus one is just ti alpha for all i. Otherwise, I have to do something. OK. What do I do? So here I have V alpha. And somewhere out here, I have little V alpha plus 1. And I now want to find my connected spanning subgraph. Uh, well, my connected subgraphs on at least these vertices, maybe more. So what do I do? First, I contract um, the set V alpha to a single vertex and delete loops. Um, OK, now I claim the edge connectivity of this graph where I contracted all of this um, is still at least lambda. Do you believe me? <laughs> No, OK. So um, well, if I uh, look at any, uh, any two vertices, um, I need to find lambda many edge disjoint paths. Well, I have uh, lambda many edge disjoint paths in the original graph. And everything which this graph is missing are loops on this vertex set. 
So basically, if a path uh, is not in this, is no longer in this graph, well, then I know it uh, uses uh, edges from this, so it at least goes into this vertex at some point, maybe does something else, but it uh, leaves this for a final time uh, to go to the other vertex. So I just know that, okay, then I can take the path to here, but then this will be the same vertex after contraction, so I can follow this path out of here then. Uh, and my set of lambda edge disjoint paths is still there, although some of them are short. Um, well, yes, paths between uh, two vertices here may com uh, collapse completely, but these are now the same vertices in the contracted graph. Two vertices outside um, will always have some edges which are not uh, contracted. And remember, um, our graph is a multigraph, so we keep parallel edges. We just deleted the loops. This is uh, important for this argument, so... Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so we still have edge connectivity uh, lambda. Okay, so now what, what do we need to find? We need to find our lambda many spanning subgraph which contain these. And to do that, um, I now build sets SI, I less than lambda. Um, these should be edge disjoint connected subgraphs. Um, all of size strictly less than lambda. Um, and S0 should contain uh, V alpha plus 1, as well as, well, this contracted vertex, let's call it uh, X alpha. So uh, X alpha and V alpha plus 1 should both be in the first. And as a third property, we want that S uh, um, I uh, is always a subset for Sj uh, for all uh, j bigger than I. So we build an increasing sequence of edge, edge disjoint, uh, well, the vertex set, sorry. Uh, we, uh, on larger and larger vertex sets, we want to be connected. Um, because then we can, uh, if we have this, uh, then we can decompose lambda disjointly into lambda many subsets of itself. This is a trick that uh, one uh, can, of course, only do in infinite graphs. Um, because every uh, infinite cardinal, we can decompose. So basically, it follows from the fact that uh, uh, when we have two cardinals, then their product, um, so the product of lambda and lambda will be lambda again for infinite cardinals. Um, also, something which you may have learned in undergraduate course. Probably just for countable infinite, but uh, the proof goes the same. Although it uses the extra choice. So, so is that you're, you're constructing SI? I, I, I haven't started constructing them yet, yeah. but I will. Um, now I uh, so I will have these. I want these properties, and I now want to convince you that uh, we will be done when I have them. And why is that? Well, um, let's. Let's write lambda as the disjoint union of some lambda many sets OI. Um, these sets will then be unbounded in lambda, um, just, beca just because all of them have size lambda. 
uh, it means that uh, for every initial segment, there will be one element uh, which will be contained in there. So this is, I, I maybe have slightly lied to you, this is another property of ordinals that we need and I didn't tell you earlier um, that uh, we will be unbounded um, in this decomposition. So the idea then is if we define Ti alpha plus 1 as the union for all uh, i in, uh, well, I should maybe say, not, not use i all the time, um, the union for all j in oi, uh, no, uh, uh, j in ok, uh, such uh, of these uh, as j's. Uh, oh, sub, wait, no, yeah, no, o, o, I was right, sorry. So I, uh, so I have my set, uh, oh, I'm missing something here, that um, O, I should be of cardinality lambda itself. I said it, but I didn't write it. Okay, so uh, these are my sets O, I of cardinality lambda. Um, so, um, Actually, for every uh, element of lambda, I will con have to contain something which is bigger than that. And then I can use this property here to ensure that uh, I actually, each, uh, each of these uh, sets will actually, um, so uh, T, uh, I, uh, kappa as the union of all of them will actually then have the whole vertex set of G as its vertex set. Yeah, this is a property um, of ordinals and that I could decompose it that way. Okay. Um, so, let me now construct the sets SI. Um, so I start um, by just putting in a path from here to here. This path has finite length. Um, so if I uh, throw it out, I still have lambda many edge disjoint paths because we have edge connectivity lambda. So this will be my set S1. Okay, so in the next step, I want to make uh, this to a connected graph. So um, maybe I throw in some other path, path uh, which doesn't use any of these edges. Um, but um, I'm not connected because now I have all these vertices on this path uh, need to be uh, in the graph as well, since uh, I want the vertex sets to be increasing. So let's uh, take a path here, and a path here, and a path here, um, such that uh, I contain all of these vertices. I can just really choose these paths, because I will always uh, use less than lambda many of them. Um, I can just greedily choose more and more to make the subgraphs connected. Another trick uh, we can often do in infinite graphs, but not in finite graphs. Okay, and in limit steps, I just uh, take the union of all previous uh, SIs. Okay. Um, this actually would complete the proof. So, any questions? <laughs> Okay. Next, I will present you the results.
from Erdős and Heinal characterizing uh, uh, the existence of a lambda covering. And this is from 1967. Let's uh, lambda be infinite. So all these characterizations only work for infinite cardinals. Then G admits uh, uh, lambda covering. If and only if um, the coloring number of G is at most the successor of lambda. So, what's the coloring number, you ask? Well, maybe some of you know. Um, in other contexts, it's called degeneracy and not coloring number. So, um, the coloring number of G is the smallest cardinal remember, it's the smallest cardinal mu such that uh, there exists a well ordering let's call it less than star of the vertices of G uh, such that every vertex um, for every vertex the set of uh, uh, neighbors of uh, V with the property that they are smaller than V in this well order is less than mu. Strictly less than mu. Okay, why is it called coloring number? Well, this is precisely the... So for finite uh, graphs, this is precisely the number uh, where the greedy algorithm would color uh, the graph. Okay, such a well order I will call a good well order. Um, okay, let me prove the theorem. One direction is again easy. Any ideas? It's not as easy as before. So, uh, again, this direction is easy. Okay, what do I do? Well, uh, I... Uh, wait, this direction? Oh, yes, here it is. Um, uh, this direction. I wrote them down the wrong way. Okay. Um, let's uh, uh, vi i less than kappa be a good well order. Uh, lambda plus is the next biggest cardinal than lambda. So the successor cardinal of lambda. Yes. So the cardinal successor, not the ordinal successor. So cardinals are also well ordered, so the notion of a successor also is well defined there. 
Okay. Um, so I have my my good well order. Um, so I can look at some vertex v and know this vertex sends uh, strictly less uh, than lambda plus. Yeah, but uh, we are in the assumption that our coloring number is lambda plus. So strictly less than lambda plus, so at most lambda many uh, edges backwards. So what do we do? We want to find a covering. Let's rainbow color all the edges going back. So no color, we use, uh, we use no color twice. Okay, um, these colors now should uh, define us our packing. So let's look at a mono. So if we look at a monochromatic set and can prove that this set is independent, uh, well, not independent, sorry, this say, set is acyclic, um, then. Uh, it is a forest, and uh, the, which covers all the edges, and uh, forests which cover the edges, we can extend to spanning keys, and hence uh, covering. Okay, so we uh, only need to show that we are a cyclic. Okay, assume that we are not a cyclic in some color. Um, so we have somewhere a cycle in here. Well, this cycle will, of course, meet the largest vertex. Um, so both edges incident to that vertex have to point backwards. So here and here. But we rainbow colored the, vertex, uh, the edges backwards. So this can't happen. <laughs> OK. So let's uh, do the harder direction. Okay. First, uh, let me remark: between any two vertices, we will only have uh, at most lambda many edges, parallel edges. Because uh, otherwise, we couldn't have a covering of lambda many spanning trees. Because otherwise, there would be a spanning tree would, which was, has to contain more than one, and this would be a cycle. Um, secondly, let me note that if our uh, edge set would be smaller or at, at most size lambda, then uh, we could well order the vertices in any way we like, and it would be a good well order. So we can assume we have uh, strictly more than lambda many edges. And combining these two facts, we can assume that we also have strictly more than lambda many vertices. Because otherwise we're done. OK. Um, now let me define something, namely a closure operation. So uh, for some set X. So I will say so set X number of vertices the lambda. At least. No, no, strictly more than lambda actually. Um, well, if um, I no, if we have uh, at most lambda many edges, then any well ordering will do. Right. Um, and between any two vertices, we only have at most lambda many edges. And right. because lambda times lambda is lambda, as you said, um, if we would have only lambda many vertices, we also would only have lambda many edges. And we would be done. So you use lambda times lambda times lambda. 
no, just twice, but. Number of pairs? Ah, yes, L number of pairs, yes. Yeah. So, lambda squared times lambda is still lambda. So, this is where the infinite and the finite Yes. Okay, so um, we define the closure operations for sets of vertices. Okay, the closure, um, well, for, let me, before that, I have to pick my covering, actually. So I pick a covering, and so I want to construct the good well order. And now I define a closure operation by first uh, choose a root um, for every spanning tree. Arbitrarily, um, this defines me then a tree order. Um, and what do I do? Um, for every point in X, I will uh, look um, at everything smaller in the tree order in some tree. I will add this to the closure. And I will do this for every vertex in the tree. So I will, for every vertex in the tree and for every vertex in X. Um, let me not write this down precisely. Um, we will get to this uh, in a minute. Okay. Um, now we actually want to construct our uh, construct our uh, good well order. Okay, what do we do? Um, uh, we start again with any uh, well ordering of the vertices. Then we define V0 as the empty set, and transfinitely we define VI plus 1 as the closure of VI together with uh, little vi. So um, we take the closure of the previous thing and make sure that at some point we will have added everything. Um, so we have a set uh, V0, where V0 is the empty set. Then we have a set V1, V1. Um, then I will write next to this the set V2 without V1. I mean, they will all be subsets of each other, of course. Uh, then I will have V3 without V2, and so on. And I, so this is actually V1 without V0, but V0 was empty. Um, so I will write them next to each other and order each of them arbitrarily. Uh, so find a total order or a well order on each of them. And then I will concatenate them in this way. I claim this is a good well order. Okay, first note that this closure operation, um, so uh, if we have a set of size strictly smaller than lambda, uh, no, not strictly smaller than lambda, sorry. Um, okay, if we uh, have a set X, which is closed, and a bigger subset Y, such that, uh, so, if, if we have one set here, and we look at a bigger subset and take the closure, um, then this closure will uh, not add more than lambda many vertices. Why? Because, well, um, for everything new we added, we added lambda many finite parts, and finite times lambda is lambda. Um, so actually, when we look now at uh, any vertex uh, V in this uh, 
new well order that we defined. And look, this will be in sum uh, vj plus 1 without vj. Um, it will send uh, at most lambda many, oh, strict, so it will send strictly less than lambda many into its own class because it appeared in a well ordering of a set of size uh, lambda. And uh, everything in the well ordering of a set of size lambda has strictly less than lambda many things below it. So then we need to ask, okay, what about neighbors in other classes? How many can we have of them? So in other previous classes. Um, and for this, we consider uh, if we have a neighbor in some lower class, let's say in uh, vi plus 1 without vi, uh, this edge will be covered by our covering. So actually it is uh, this edge E, uh, E is in some, uh, some Ti. In particular, um, so E, let's say this is WV, so this vertex, let's call it W. Um, in particular, W in, uh, in this well ordering is, has to be, uh, well, in this well ordering it is less than V, we know that, sorry, I mean in the uh, ordering that is induced by this tree Ti. Okay. Maybe you should call called Tk. I is uh, used already here. Okay, in this Tk, it has to be lower than this. Why? Well, if it would be higher than this, um, then V would have been in the closure of that tree because we took everything which was lower than it in the closure operation. Um, Okay, so it is strictly smaller than this. But every tree, whenever we look at some vertex, has uh, precisely one edge to a thing lower than it. So for every one of these lambda many trees, we have at most one edge uh, from V which goes down. So we have only lambda many edges. And that finishes this proof. Uh, sorry, yes, uh, uh, V tau for tau limits is just uh, the union of, uh, of all V alpha, alpha less than tau. Um, nothing special there. Uh, yes, so we will still... Uh, so, um, uh, so yes, this, so we still, so we may have some, some limit here, um, but we add nothing new. So everything uh, which we add will be added in the successor step. So they don't uh, really feature. So these sets, we could really um, arrange that it was always the alpha plus one without the alpha, and so on. Okay, um, now my time is, I think, almost up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, technically, I still wanted to prove this theorem. Maybe you allow me five minutes to talk about it. <laughs> Yeah? Okay. Uh. Okay.
Okay. Um, so um, we also, we again only need to prove uh, one of the directions because uh, um, if we have a decomposition, this will al already be a packing and a covering. Um, so for the other direction, we take uh, good well ordering. Um, we look at the sets EI of backwards edges uh, of uh, the vertex VI. And uh, what do we do? Well, um, we, uh, we well order these uh, arbitrarily and uh, concatenate them. Uh, so here we have uh, uh, E0, E1, E2, as before. Um, uh, yes, an ordering from the covering. Yes, so we have a covering. So our coloring number is uh, lambda plus, uh, less than lambda plus. We take a good well ordering, and we take uh, also a packing. Okay, what uh, what do we do? Um, we, uh, we if this packing does not cover everything, we want uh, in each step exchange something which we are not covering with uh, something else uh, from one of those trees, while uh, making sure that in each step we still will be a, a packing. And the thing that we are exchanging it with will be uh, strictly larger in this well order that I defined here. Uh, meaning that if we exchange something, uh, we will actually. Um, uh, so yes, so this this that we replace it with something strictly larger will allow us uh, to ensure that. In limit steps, we actually still are connected, which is the uh, thing which is uh, the hardest here. So let me just tell you how we do it and not prove you that it works. Um, but if you have questions, uh, you can come to me. So assume that in step alpha plus one, um, uh, E alpha is uncovered. What do we do? Um, well, we know the set of um, uh, the set of backwards edges inside. Uh, uh, so the set of back backwards edges is uh, strictly less than lambda. Um, uh, this uh, uh, yes is strictly. Ah, oh, okay, no. I, I should write it down, sorry. So the set of uh, those E, which in this well ordering that we picked here, are less than E alpha. Um, e in EI. This set uh, is strictly less than lambda. Sorry. Um, this means that we find a tree in our packing which contains none of those. Um, in this tree, in this tree here, uh, we have uh, this edge E alpha. We take the fundamental cycle, which is a finite cycle in that tree, and in this cycle we exchange the highest edge, uh, largest edge. Uh, with uh, E alpha. And this allows us to do the proof, but sadly, I don't have the time for it. But if anyone wants to hear it, I'm happy to talk about it.
uh, afterwards. Okay, thank you.